expensive? Mm -hmm. They don't put midterm on the syllabus if they just put exam. Mm -hmm. They no, don't ours is a change midterm. whenever they want. See, ours says midterm. Yeah, but she specified a week. Once you've specified a week, you can't change it. If you put exam and then put to be announced, you can change it to whenever your heart desires. We don't have a midterm week anymore. It's like two weeks. Who's she? Who's she? Anybody. Anyone that knows that. Everybody. Everybody's a she? Yeah. I'm not, not the last time. No, anyone that does that. That's the thing that was a he. But that's the thing. Dr. York <laughs> specifies what week she's going to have her midterm. So if you put midterm and specify a date or a week, you can do that. But if you just put exam and put to be announced, you can change it whenever you feel like. That's interesting. Yep. Yeah. So midterms, week terms, and midterms, month which turns into finals, which turns into quarter. Midterms week was the week, the week before last. That's what I'm saying. Midterms week turns into midterm month. Don't marathon after like the 14th. Once you start exam, that week three, it doesn't end until the quarter, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, it is being filmed. Well, you can turn it off. It didn't, no. no. I'm going to make everybody happy. Well, I just found nobody was here. I'm going to wait for that. We're going to be selling those CDs at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Buy one, get one free. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me remind you, press some type, buy some type. Okay. One of them, we have a lateral one, which is also uh, uh, called the what? Intermedial lateral self count. The more likely you see that word, you'll see lateral one. And in here, uh, uh, from T1 to L2, we have this intermediate lateral self count. And we have a cell in here in it. Norepinephrine. And all of them. 
all the plus gain are synthetic except what? Except synthetic and sweat glands. Watch out if you do uh, uh, inhale to release the ACH. That's an exception. You want to watch out because on, on the board reviews of a ring group or guy, or I don't know which one, one of those books that you get, if you have, it tells you that uh, blood vessels also receive or fiber have to receive ACH. They don't. They receive no epinephrine. The only ACH that, that, that review book is wrong. The only ACH is going to sweat glands. That's part of the table. There's also this. Here, like this, it goes through the chain ganglion, but then it exits and goes to the prevertebral ganglion. We're talking about the prevertebral ganglion, not vertebral. It's a chain. Gotcha. It's the one far, far means far next to. Okay. Next to the vertebra is a chain because the vertebra is over here. That's the IVF. There's a vertebra here, uh -huh. so it's next to it. Okay. This is in front of it. Okay. Gotcha. Prevertebral is going to the guts, and the nerve, the, the axon is in here exiting the chain ganglion. Are called what? Splanchnic nerves. That's GVE, it's in fact. This is still myelinated, this is still the axon of this neuron here, of this subbody. It's myelinated. The unmyelinated is postganglionic out here. You also have the afferents. You also have the afferent, which is coming from here. It goes like this, this is this way. The blue one is the airfront, right? The sensory. And it goes through the gang chain ganglion. It goes through the, the previous table, through the paratheal, through the white ramus, into the spinal nerve, and up the dorsal with that sensory. It's a pseudo polar as usual. And again, then it goes in here and synapses and then we <coughs> That's GVA. That's a B myelinated fiber. The green and the red are what? G V E, right? That's synthetic sensory, that's synthetic motor. Synthetic sensory brings in what? Pain and temperature from the internal organs. The synthetic in general is a system of fight or flight, mobilizing to face emergencies, and emotional arousal. Sexually, it's a system of ejaculation. That's in Gaikin too. I'm just looking at this one. Parasympathetic comes from it has a cranial division and a sacral division. The cranial is present in nerves what? Three, seven, nine, and ten. Remember that? Mm -hmm. The sacral comes from S2 to S4. Lamina seven. But there is no lateral horn in here, no intermediate lateral cell column in lamina seven. The parasympathetic, by the way, is a system of what? Relaxation, digestion, excretion, 
and, and sexual arousal, not, men, not emotional arousal, sexual arousal, erections, that's parasympathetic. And three, that's the acromotor, who come mostly from Edinger, West Hall, that's right. That's preganglionic. And we're going to the ciliary ganglion. And from here, we go to Constrict, not see that constrictor pupilla. Constrictor pupilla. We also go from superior medial or EW. Depends on how much detail they want. They may consider superior media part of the Edinger Westphal, or they may not. Superior media also goes here, and from here you go to the ciliary body, or ciliary muscles. The ciliary body has, uh, has longitudinal, longitudinal and circular muscle fibers, like, like the, the iris. The pupil, the pupil, the circum dilates, but in here, the two sets of muscles in the ciliary body, longitudinal and circular, both of them are parasympathetic and they work together. What kind of ganglion is this? A terminal ganglion, that's right. Most of the parasympathetic are terminal ganglion. By the time you get to the vagus and to, to the sacral ones in here, most of the ganglia are intramural. But some of them are also filmed in, down there. Seven comes to superior salivatory, and it goes to what? Submaxillary or submandibular ganglia and submandibular gland, salivary gland. Some of it also goes to the lacrimal glands. <coughs> Nine goes to the otic ganglion, which is terminal. And from here you go from here you go to the parotid gland. That sound familiar? Then, then now comes from the dorsal motor nucleus of ten, and it goes to intramural. Ganglia, intramural, and from there it goes to the tissues, postganglion. The intramurals are in the tissue itself, so postganglion is very tiny, very, very small. The territory of the vagus is from the pharynx the second third of the pharynx, all the way to the left colic flexure, of two thirds of the transverse colon. Colic flexure. The dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus goes to all the tissues from the pharynx to the left colic flexure, except the heart. Parasympathetic to the heart comes from nucleus ambiguous in Maduro, right? Now you get to the left colic flexure, what about after this? After that it's from the sacral division 
of the fast and fed. It comes from S2 plus 4 lambda 7. Again, no lateral horn here. Those are nervi erigentes. Or pelvic splanks. Watch out, they're not sacral splanks, even though they come from the sacral cord. Sacral splanks are synthetic. And those go to intramural ganglia, and then they go to the tissues, the pelvic region. So the synthetic is thoracolumbar, the parasynthetic is what? Cranial sacral. One thing you want to remember is how long the axons are. For the synthetic, in a synthetic, the preganglionic is short, postganglionic is wide, very long, like in the spinal nerve, it's my nerve, or, or I mean the spinal nerve. In parasynthetic, that's synthetic. We're going to read in this in a minute. In parasynthetic, remember the ganglion is sitting next to the vertebra or in front of it. So the, the pygmalionic doesn't have that much space to travel, that much distance to travel. Then if the postgamalionic come long. So this is short, this is long. Remember the paravertebra next to the vertebra, the ganglion? The parasympathetic, on the other hand, where's the ganglia? Near the end. It's the what kind of ganglia? Terminal, remember? At the end of the pathway, near the target, or intramural in the target. So in this case, the preganglionic pre is what? Long. And the postganglionic is short. That's a critical thing you want to remember when you compare those two. Also, we said the transmitter here is what? ACH. And the transmitter here is North and Africa. Except where? On sweat glands, right? Mm -hmm. The parasympathetic here is ACH, like the synthetic. And the postgranionic is also ACH. All parasympathetic postgranionic release ACH. Some of them release nitric oxide or other, other transmitters too. Now let's see the muscarinic and the catenic deal. Person tech, person things when I come from motor neuron in the periphery. Synthetic, I bring in two. The ganglion here can be pre-vertebral, 
it won't make much difference. That's not why I put two of them. This is going to all the targets of this is going to sweat glands. Except sweat glands. This is all parasympathetic. Somatic alpha motor is going from the motor neuron to, to the skeletal muscle. Neuromuscular junction, not the synapse. Neuromuscular junction or myoneural junction. The spike of transmission. What I want to come to here is uh, which type of receptor we have, not the transmitter itself. What we're releasing here is what? ACH. 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 All pregimnionic axons release ACH, whether they're synthetic or parasympathetic. So my alpha motor neuron is going to scalp the muscle from lemon and nine. Remember, all of them release ACH always. There's nothing else for scalp the muscle. ACH. Postganglionic axons here release norepinephrine. On sweat glands, they release ACH. Parasympathetic postganglionic all release is each. And for somatic, there is no pain postganglionic, it's just a one. It's always is each. Now what we want to do is look at the receptors. Receptors for ACH are cholinergic. Receptors for norepinephrine are what? Adrenergic, right? For adrenaline. Okay? Now, for cholinergic, you have muscarinic and nicotinic. The receptors in here are going to be on the postganglionic neurons that receive the preganglionic pre axons, right? So the receptors here and here are nicotinic. That's called allergic nicotinic. Receptors on postganglionic neurons are nicotinic, whether they're synthetic or parasynthetic. This neuron is cholinergic, but this neuron, this one, is not cholinergic, it's adrenergic, right? Because it releases norepinephrine. But both of them have what? Cholinergic receptors on them to pick up these heats from here. So they are cholinergic and nicotinic. So it's this one, it's, cholin it's a cholinergic neuron, but it also has on it receptors for freaking down it that are cholinergic, what? Right? Nicotinic. So all postmedionic neurons, synthetic or parasympathetic, have on them nicotinic receptors to pick up the ACH. Let's follow this. Mm -hmm. Don't confuse the neuron and the receptor. The receptor on skeletal muscle for ACH are also nicotinic. On the sweat gland, on uh, all the, the synthetic, the receptors are what? Adrenergic, right? They receive more epinephrine. Adrenergic receptors. Now, this is the exceptions here. All the targets are postimmunic parasympathetic axons and muscarinic. Targets of postgimbalian parasympathetic are muscular. So are so are the sweat glands. That means the target of all postgimbalianic axons that relieve is release ACH. The target will be what muscular versus nicotine. You understand this? Don't get confused. On this.
bring up some stuff I want to say about muscle. Muscle physiology, by the way, on board is not more physiology, it's something different. Skeletal muscle. This, the vertical thing is a Z disc. Just to become the Z line. So there's the two Z lines that I'm showing here. The area between two Z lines is a sarcomere. A muscle, a muscle is made up of bundles, fiber bundles. A bundle is made up of muscle fibers. A muscle fiber is made up of what? Myo fibrous. And a myo fibril is made up of myo filaments. There are two kinds of myo filaments. Actin and mice. Mm -hmm. One myofibril, one myofibril, one of those will have 3,000 actins, 1,500 myosins. And one myofibril. That means the ratio in skeletal muscle is what? Mm. Two to one. In smooth muscle, the ratio is ten to one. Ten actins to one minus, not two to one. What we're showing in here is a myofibril on board in here, and it keeps going all the way to the wall here and all the way to the wall there. It's tubular, it's not flat. So we're showing it like this. But it really is tubular like that, so it goes all the way around. So you have the sarcomeres like this lined up all along the myofibril, all the way around it. <coughs> so the myofibril is made up of many sarcomeres lined up. The east sarcomere circling, going all the way around the myofibril, and they're sitting next to each other in a sequence. So you have each micro is a is a sarcomere, then you have you have your myofibril. This is the actin filament. Overlapping the actin is a myosin. you have one minus into two actins. In smooth muscle, it's like this. The actin come out of those fish tail looking things are called titan. It's a form of actin. In, so the, the actin filaments are extension of those titans on either side of the sarcomere. In smooth muscle, you don't have Z lines. It's not striated. You don't have those stripes. Instead, it's radiating from different 
uh, centers. It's got a dense body. And from it, you have the actin filaments extending like this. That's the actin. muscle, you don't have Z lines or Z disc, you have dense bodies instead with uh, <coughs> the actin radiating from it. The, the myosin filaments are at a ratio of 10 to 1, 10 actins to 1 myosin. So the myosin is going to be able to pull a lot more actin, which is going to be stronger. Also in here, the, oh, well, I'll come back to that. The myosin filament is very long. So no matter how much you stretch the smooth muscle, the muscle filament can still reach the actin. In, in the striatal muscle, if you stretch the muscle, the actin get out of the range of the muscle, the muscle can bring it back in. Or they may have a hard time bringing it back in. And here, then you have hooks like this called cross bridges. Notice cross bridges are on one direction only. That is, they go down, they don't go up. This muscle filament connects to those two actin. This muscle filament connects to these two actin. When uh, in here, the muscle filament connects to actin on, on either side. So it connects to those, and it connects to, to, to this one. And it connects to this one, and it connects to that one. So those are bipolars. They, 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 they pull in, they connect to more actins. The myosin filament stands dark. The actin stands light. So you get alternating bands of dark and light. Look at this. Dark, light. The actin filaments don't pick up much stain. Muscle filaments pick up much stain. So you get alternating all the way up and down the left and right. You get alternating bands of dark and light, dark and light, which is why it's called a straight or muscle straight. The dark band. The light band is called the eye band. The dark band is called the A band. Then you have another eye band in here. So you alternate eye band and A band, eye band. The A, the A band is a muscle and the actin that it overlaps at rest. The eye band is centered on the Z line between two sarcomeres. And it's, it's the, the eye band is only actin. There's no myosin in it. Then you have another band, which is here. That's a portion of myosin that doesn't have any actin in it at all. This is the H band. Let's see how that works. When the muscle is contracting, the cross bridges attach to the actin and pull it in. Remember the ratchet action? They pull them in. As you pull them in, the 
sarcomere, it was like that, gets shorter. Until you get complete overlap of the actinomonasis. At rest, this is about 3.5 micrometer long. When it's full contraction, maximum contraction, it's around 2.2. That's a maximum contraction, total overlap of the three filaments per sarcomere. It can go down to about 1.5, 1.6, and still be okay. If you, you go below 1.5 or 1.6, the filaments will wrinkle and you lose strength. This is maximum sarcomere. So the question now that we want to look at is what happens to those bands and filaments when you contract? Contraction, during contraction, with the sarcomere that's shorter. What do you think? When a muscle contract, the sarcomere gets shorter. Sarcomere is the distance between two Z lines. Yeah. So is the sarcomere getting shorter? Yes. Will the myosin filament get shorter? No. Will the actin filament get shorter? No. Will the A band get shorter? What's the A band? It's a mass. So will it get shorter? No. Will the I band get shorter? No. Yes. That's the act and it's not overlap because it's going to get pulled under mass. So in contraction, in normal contraction, the sarcomere gets shorter, the I band gets shorter. The filaments don't get shorter, the act and the mass don't get shorter, and the, the, the mass and band, which is the A band, does not get shorter unless you, 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 you're going to rank it up or something. I want to remember, though, which gets shorter, which doesn't. Um, the A band? No, the A band doesn't. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually going to disappear altogether. The resting potential of the skeletal muscle fiber, of a nerve cell fiber, let's start with this one, is minus what? 70. Threshold, 9, 0, 1. We have another set of numbers for that, for the nerve cell, which is minus what? 65, no nerve cell. Oh, okay. So not to the number, right? From the from there two sets, remember that? In a in a muscle fiber, skeletal muscle fiber, the resting potential is what now? Skeletal muscle. Minus 90. Not minus 70 or 65. And peak is going to go to 35. Always. In the nerve cell, we have the ascending and the descending, and we have the peak. And what happens in the ascending? Active or passive. Sodium goes in active or passive. Passive, then it's great because there's more sodium outside than inside. So the main passive. Descending phase. Potassium out. Passive also. The whole thing lasts one millisecond, one to two milliseconds. Skeletal muscle is different. 
speed goes up. It's still so dimming. Passive. But the potassium comes out, there's no peak. The potassium comes out in two stages. First, it comes out slowly, so you're coming down very gently like this, and then it comes out fast. This is, both of those are what? Potassium out, passive. That's not the peak, that's called a plateau. In a game of sodium, out is potassium. Yeah, potassium. The duration here is four, four to six milliseconds, not one or two. After it is a hyperpolarizing. After potential, you have it in the muscle too. You have it in here also. Now, smooth muscle is a different story. Smooth muscle. The resting is approximately minus 50. Can go up to minus 60. The threshold is around minus 75. When you go from a nerve cell to a nerve cell, that's a chemical what? Synapse. When you go from a nerve cell to a skeletal muscle fiber, it's not a chemical, it is a chemical synapse, we don't call it that. We call it a neural muscular junction. or myoneural junction. When you put the smooth muscle, it's a whole different story. Terminal doesn't contact the muscle fiber at all. It's a few microns away from it. So this is called a diffuse junction. Besides, the muscle fibers in here have gap junctions between them, which means when one of them so the signal that happens, all of them will fire a signal too. And one of them contracts, they're all contracting too. They have gap junctions. And the diffuse junction is not even going to one muscle fiber, it goes to thousands of them. So you don't get one, you get a whole bunch of them firing together. And also smooth muscle fibers display spontaneous electric activity. Means it can generate signals without in your cell. Scapulous fiber does not do that. And in here, you only have ACH. 
the neuromuscular junction. In here, you can have a slew of chemicals. ACH, norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, a number of chemicals can do that. Okay. 